Today on the Stay at Home Chef, I'm showing you my master muffin recipe. Instead of giving you dozens of recipes for different flavors of muffins, today I'm sharing my master muffin recipe, which you can use to make almost any flavor, and it's super easy. Start by preheating your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Then line a 12 cup muffin tin with paper baking cups. Then I like to give mine just a spritz of nonstick cooking spray right on those paper baking cups to prevent the muffins from sticking. Now it's time to put together our batter. First, I'm gonna demonstrate a basic muffin batter, and then I'm gonna show you five different variations, each demonstrating a different way that you can build upon the base recipe. The batter starts with half a cup of softened salted butter and one cup of granulated sugar. We're gonna use a hand mixer to cream this together. At first, this mixture will be lumpy, but keep on mixing for about two minutes. After two minutes, your sugar and butter will be well combined and it'll be a smooth paste-like creamy consistency. Then you'll add in two large eggs and mix this briefly until just combined about 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract, or you can use other flavors of extract like almond extract, orange extract, lemon extract. Those are all super popular options. For the lemon and citrus extracts, I recommend only using half a teaspoon of those and combining that with half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You'll also need two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. This is also the point where you'd add in any spices like cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. We're gonna give this a quick mix just to combine about 10 seconds. Now at this point, it's time to ditch our hand mixer and grab a rubber spatula. Add in half of your all-purpose flour. You're gonna use two cups total, so you're gonna add in one cup right now. Then use the rubber spatula to stir this in. Once all those white specks of flour start to disappear, you'll pour in half a cup of either milk or buttermilk. Buttermilk's gonna give you a little bit of a poofier muffin and you'll stir this in as well until it's well combined. Last, you'll add in the remaining one cup of all-purpose flour. Stir this together, scraping the sides and bottom of the bowl to ensure that everything gets mixed in. Now, if you're gonna add anything into your muffins, like dried fruit, chocolate chips, or berries, now would be the time to do so, but I'll show you that in just a minute. Your batter should be thick, but also spreadable. We're gonna divide the batter up amongst our 12 muffin cups and you should fill each one about two thirds of the way full. It's always a little bit hard to tell what's two thirds or what's three quarters, so just try to divide your batter up as evenly as possible because this does make 12 muffins. You can let your muffin batter rest for about 15 minutes before popping it in the oven, or if you're making a larger batch, it's totally okay to let it rest in between cooking different batches. Bake your muffins in the 425 degree oven for seven minutes. After seven minutes, reduce the temperature on your oven to 350 degrees without opening the oven door. Continue baking for 12 to 15 minutes and watch them carefully as the cooking time will vary a little bit depending on your oven. Now let's start going over some variations, starting with a lemon blueberry muffin. This is great because it demonstrates both using another flavor of extract as well as adding in fresh fruit. I've already creamed together the sugar and butter and added in the eggs, so now I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and half a teaspoon of lemon extract before adding in my baking powder and salt. Continue on with the rest of the recipe, adding in the flour and buttermilk. Once you have your batter finished, you'll add in one cup of fresh blueberries or frozen even, you can use those too. Then this is optional, but I like to add in the zest of one lemon, so about a tablespoon of lemon zest. Then simply fold this in. Then it's just a matter of once again, dividing the batter evenly amongst the 12 muffin cups. One fun topping you can experiment with is sprinkling on about a teaspoon of granulated sugar on top of your muffins. This gives it a nice little crunchy sweet top. And then of course bake these just as we did before. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to make a chocolate version. For a chocolate version, you'll use your butter and sugar again, just like before, but this time you'll add in half a cup of cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder, and cream that in with it. From here, you'll proceed with the rest of the master muffin recipe by adding in eggs, baking powder, salt, vanilla extract, all-purpose flour, and milk or buttermilk. The addition of the cocoa powder really doesn't do much to change the texture of the final batter. Then, just for fun, I'm gonna add in one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and fold those in. Even though you can mix and match add-ins, you want a total 
any additions that you make like chocolate chips or nuts or dried fruit to one cup total. Next, I'm gonna show you one of my very favorite muffin hacks that allows you to switch up with all sorts of different flavors by using instant pudding. This time, you're only gonna add in three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar because you're gonna replace that additional quarter cup with a 3.4 ounce package of instant pudding mix, and this time I'm using pistachio because it's one of my favorite flavors. Cream this together and then proceed with the master muffin recipe as directed. You could even fold in some chopped pistachios if you wanted. This variation is fun because there's just so many different flavors of instant pudding out there. It makes it really easy to mix and match flavors really quickly without having to buy a bunch of extracts. Next, I wanna show just how easy it is to mix and match add-ins to add a little bit of flavor to the base recipe without too much hassle. So I'm gonna show you a cranberry white chocolate chip with a little bit of orange zest. This is the master recipe with no alterations to it. I'm gonna add in half a cup of dried cranberries because like I said before, we're gonna use one cup of add-ins total. That means that the white chocolate chips will also come in at half a cup for one cup total. I didn't have any orange extract today, but that's okay because a little bit of orange zest, one to two tablespoons total, will add just a hint of orange flavor. Once again, it's simply a matter of folding this in until the ingredients are evenly distributed. You can do chocolate chips, raisins, nuts, really the possibilities are endless. Last, I wanna show you how to add in spices, which is super easy and I really don't have to show you, but I thought it would be fun to show a cinnamon muffin with cinnamon chips folded in, topped with a brown sugar streusel, and that's just delicious. I've already creamed together the butter and sugar, added in the eggs, baking powder, salt and vanilla extract, and now I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. You can use between half a teaspoon and one full teaspoon. It really just depends on how pronounced you want that cinnamon flavor to be. Finish with the rest of the master muffin recipe by adding in the flour and buttermilk. I'm gonna fold in one cup of cinnamon chips, which are delicious, but they can be a little harder to find when it's not the holidays. Go ahead and divide up the batter in your prepared muffin cups before making your streusel topping. A streusel is easy to make and it is a decadent addition to lots of different flavors of muffins. It starts with a quarter cup of cold cubed butter. Then you'll add in half a cup of brown sugar and half a cup of all-purpose flour adding in a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Then use a pastry cutter, or you can use two knives, cutting across each other like this. And then you wanna cut this all together until it resembles a coarse meal or sand. Then you wanna sprinkle this generously on top of your muffin batter. It's almost like having little piles of sand on top of each muffin. And of course, the baking time on all of these are the same. Now you know how to make pretty much any flavor of muffin that you want using one master recipe. Thanks for watching. You can find the full written recipe as well as other flavor ideas in the video description. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow, and check out the rest of my videos where you can find hundreds of restaurant quality recipes you can easily make at home. We'll see you later.